So today we're looking at playing thirds on the classical guitar, and specifically C major in thirds, two octaves, in both solid form and broken form. I've been trying to do these weekly technique videos, and you know, even if you're, you're not practicing all the exercises I'm doing, just watching the video will give you lots of tips on how to approach things in your repertoire or your technique practice, and the reason why we practiced um, technique, and just ways of approaching things. So. Um, this exercise um, comes from my technique book, and the technique book has hundreds of exercises, um, but this section is on thirds, sixths, and octaves, and playing scales in these different intervals, so I'll talk about that a bit. There's a link for that book underneath the video, but uh, just follow along for free if you like. So, um, there's a number of reasons why we play thirds on the guitar, and or, you know, every instrument does this, but... It's really good for our technique, specifically our left hand technique, but also our right hand. Um, it's good for our musical knowledge, our knowledge of what thirds are, and um, and the order of you know major and minor chords within a harmonized major scale. So we'll talk about that later. Um, also, thirds appear in your repertoire. So if you practice thirds, when they do appear in your repertoire, you'll have practiced them and you'll um, be ready for them, right? Um, another aspect would be the, the idea of playing them solid and broken. Um, solid is when they're together. Broken is playing them um, displaced. Um, gives you ideas about how to practice similar passages in your repertoire, even if the passages aren't in thirds. It's like ways to practice, essentially. So let's talk about... Um, well, let's go through the scale first and just make sure that we, we've... We've gone over it, and then let's talk about um, some technique and musical knowledge and, um, and how it, this might help you practice as well. So thirds are literally like um, intervals. And I, I can't go over all of music theory in one lesson, but essentially if you have a C major scale, one, two, three, that's a third, and, you know, C, D, E. And if I go from the next note, D, well, D, E, F. So thirds, and literally on the staff, they'll be you know stacked up in, in that way. So when we go through it, let's just um, talk a little bit about the fingering, and then we'll talk about technique in a second. So fingering-wise, we're going to start with 3-2, and then slide the second finger up, get the fourth finger there, and then we're already on those ones. And then you just squeeze these fingers in, Position, have these fingers ready, and then we're just going to go up the neck here. And then it would go back down. In terms of the left hand, just make sh uh, we'll be talking a lot about curving the fingers and whatnot, but making all your movements very compact, right? Uh, right hand fingering. Um, is just for the solid form, I would probably just do I am. Or if you wanted, you could do thumb and then alternate the fingers. You know, just alternating P I P M P I P M. It doesn't really matter so much though. Um, you might want to practice both just to get the practice in. Um, for the broken format, um, I'm using P and I, so P, I, P, I, P, I, P, I, and that's a really great thing to practice because you can really practice getting your thumb in front of the finger. You don't ever want traffic jams, so keeping that thumb in front of the finger is a good idea. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty efficient way of, of fingering, like I really like that fingering. But you could alternate the fingers, you could go thumb, I, thumb, M, thumb, I, thumb. Um, it's a little bit more complex, but that that can be um, useful too. You could also do thumb and M or thumb and A, uh, uh, various combos. You could use I M as well, or M A for that matter. So any combination works, um, but you can experiment with doing a lot of them. Depending on how much time you have, you might want to go through every conceivable fingering that you can think of. Just as an overview of the of what. Um, technical aspects you want to keep in mind when you're practicing this. 
Um, like I said, keep very curved fingers. So if you're outstretched like this, that's no good. Very curved fingers playing on your fingertips. When you do any kind of shift, move your thumb with your hand. So just let your arm move your hand up. So if my thumb is there for that shape, then it's there for that shape, usually behind my second finger. So um, keeping everything aligned, curved on your fingertips. Keep your movements nice and minimal. And when you do the shifts, Try to do no recorrection after you do the shift. You shift right into place. <laughs> That's a major interval. You know, you want to shift right to the point, right to the place that you want. No recorrections after the fact. Until you're, you're really confident going up and down through that scale in thirds without any interruptions or um, any, any mess ups. So take it very, very slow uh, when you're practicing and practice really good technique while you're practicing it. That way, when you speed it up, um, you can maintain that good technique and the accuracy. Okay, so let's talk about why it's good for your technique. Well, one thing that's great about thirds is that they're so close together that if you're kind of sloppy, you'll mute the lower note by accident. So you, you really have to be in your fingertips. And so curving your fingers um, is absolutely necessary so you don't accidentally mute anything out. So we want to be on our fingertips as close to the fret as possible. And then there's a number of other techniques involved in playing thirds. So there's the left hand like curvature of the fingers and just accuracy and all that stuff. But there's, it also involves shifts, especially when we get up here and we're shifting up the neck. So a really good practice for shifting. And guide fingers, there's guide fingers everywhere like second finger guide finger. Um, when we get to here, third finger, third finger, second finger, or actually it's the third finger guide all the way up. If you watch my third finger, it just stays on that second string. So lots of guide fingers. And, um, you know, anytime that you play anything on the guitar, there's, uh, of course, all sorts of alignment um, that you can keep track of, keeping your fingers over the frets, keeping them in order. When you do this little exchange at the top, I even buzzed a little bit because I wasn't, I wasn't perfectly aligned. You have to be really nicely aligned to hold on to these two notes and then play those two. Students have a trouble with that finger combination there, but um, as long as your hand is aligned and this knuckle is over here, you can see these fingers are just hovering over those frets, it should be easy to play. But some the students are often misaligned and then they they have to like reach out to get those notes. You don't want that. You want to make sure that your hand is aligned so that you can just grab those notes. So, you know, all these things come up when you practice um, um, a variety of techniques, right? If you're practicing in thirds, all these different things come up. So you might want to practice your left hand technique to prepare for thirds. You might want to practice your shifts to prepare for playing thirds. You might want to practice guide fingers. To prepare for thirds, you might want to practice accuracy, playing close to the fret, to prepare for thirds, um, curving your fingers to prepare to play thirds. Um, so it, it's like very inclusive of many different techniques. It's also good for your musical knowledge. When you go through thirds, you're actually going through the harmonized major scale. So it's a major interval or major third, minor third, minor third, major third, major third, minor third, minor third, major third. Major third that's the octave. And then you'll also do the same going up. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. So it teaches you the shapes of the intervals as well, especially if you say the, that order out, right? And it's the same for every single major scale in thirds or sixths. Um, is that it's going to go major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. 
Um, and when you do like the triads, you know, that's a C major chord, a D minor chord, and then E minor chord, F major chord, G major chord. So it teaches you the order of majors and minors in a harmonized scale. You don't need to know all this music theory to practice the scale, but it is of interest and you can, it, it's an avenue to, um, or an opportunity to look into music theory a little bit more on your instrument and to make a connection between music theory and the guitar. Um, another reason to practice, like I said, um, thirds appear in repertoire. So um, if you if you are really prepared to play these, um, you'll you'll find like for example this shape comes up a lot in repertoire, and so this is an opportunity for you to learn that shape, and it will doing this A minor co combo to this little B minor thing, um, it will come up in repertoire eventually. So by practicing lots of technique, you're preparing for future repertoire. Um, now, um, practicing these things solid versus broken. Practicing something solid really teaches you the shapes, right? Um, teaches you the overall shape of what you're doing. Practicing it broken is probably, well, sometimes uh, more similar to your repertoire, for example. So when you're practicing your pieces in your repertoire, um, quite often what we'll do to practice them is we'll play chord forms solid um, and then we'll play them as written. Um, and that really helps. Like instead of playing something like... Something like that. I don't know. I'm just making it up. But, um, you know, you could practice this. a piece that was that would be practicing it in solid chords that way when you go to play it in um, arpeggiated format um, that way when you play it in you know the written format you already know the shapes so that's kind of how we practice Repertoire. So practicing your technique in a variety of ways gives you ideas about how to practice your repertoire as well. So um, I hope you found that useful. Um, there's a lot more to talk about in terms of thirds and on the theory behind them and all the various technique that we might talk about. But nevertheless, um, uh, that gives you an idea of, of one way of practicing technique and one possible technique exercise that encompasses a lot of different techniques that you can work on.